This banjo is filthy. Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo with The Banjo File. Thank you for stopping by. So today we're going to talk about an issue that I keep seeing come up on banjo forums that I read where people are asking, how do I clean my banjo? How do I do a deep cleaning of my banjo? Um, not sure why there's so many filthy banjos out there these days, but um, I got one. This is the nicest sounding banjo in my collection. This is a Batrider standard banjo. Um, and it just has a wonderful sweet tone to it. It just sounds terrific. Um, uh, it's not it's not a lot to look at. It's not fancy looking, but it is a beautifully crafted banjo and Bat uh, recently um, uh, retired actually from banjo making. This is uh, summer of uh, 2021, but uh, retired in the spring. And these banjos that, that are made by him uh, very quickly became uh, scarce, hard to find. So I'm glad that I that I own this, but it it because I own multiple banjos, this one um, fell out of rotation for a while from, from me using it. Um, it was uh, in a room that um, was being, was pressed into service as a bedroom and um, uh, it was not handy so I wasn't using it very often and uh, because that room was a bedroom it got really dusty. It's not it's not grimy. It doesn't have sort of oily dirt on it that might accumulate on a banjo that's been handled a lot over many many years uh, with um, grubby uh, sweaty uh, hands or with hand lotion or whatever. It's just from holding it uh, uh, over a long time you might get grimy dirt on it. This one is just really really dusty. So um, we'll clean this banjo. I'm going to show you how I clean my banjos um, and hopefully answer some of the questions that people have had about how to do that. Now some folks like having a grubby banjo. They consider it a uh, badge of honor that it shows many hours uh, spent behind the pot, especially if the uh, head is very uh, dirty or um, scuffed. Um, well, and, and that's fine to each their own. I myself don't. I like to have a really nice clean banjo. I like to have a clean head. Um, it just looks so much more inviting and enjoyable to play for me. Um, so that's my preference and clearly I'm not alone uh, in that uh, judging by how many folks I, I see asking about what's a good way to clean their banjo. So let's try to take a closer look at how grubby this banjo really is. I hope you could see that the hardware is um, dirty with fingerprints and dust. There's some tarnish on the uh, tone ring. You could see through the head that the tone ring is a little bit tarnished. The tailpiece is very dusty. Let's take a look at the neck. The neck is very dusty. The frets are dusty. It's pretty grubby by my standards. So what tools are we going to need to do a banjo deep cleaning? Well, I've got an assortment of tools uh, set up here. Um, on the one side, on, on my left, I have uh, some tools that I consider to be probably necessary uh, in order to do a good cleaning. And on the right here, I have tools that are probably nice to have, but not necessary. Um, so let's take a look at the necessary tools. Um, we'll start off with, of course, you're going to want a new set of strings um, uh, to put on your nice clean banjo and a uh, tuna of some kind. Here I've got a uh, snack super tight. I like the snack super tight uh, electronic tuners. I have uh, an assortment of some tools, um, uh, some needle nose pliers, 
and uh, wire cutters. You might want the needle nose pliers um, to remove, um, let's say, um, the nut holding your tuning machines if you want to re remove your tuning machines for uh, uh, cleaning. Um, and they may be helpful when you're stringing your banjo um, and wire cutters for when you're stringing your banjo. Um, I have a um, I have a bracket wrench uh, for removing the nuts from your um, uh, brackets. I have a soft toothbrush uh, for brushing um, small parts. I have a graphite mechanical pencil. I find a mechanical pencil is uh, better than, than a standard pencil. Um, what's the pencil for? To, um, to rub graphite on the bridge and the nut when you uh, are stringing up your banjo. Uh, putting a little bit of graphite in the slots helps keep the strings from sticking in the slots. Um, a little bit of glass cleaner um, for any, uh, any grimy spots. And some cleaning cloths. I have some uh, microfiber cleaning cloths here. And, an, and a very soft instrument cleaning cloth. Now on the side of stuff that I think is probably nice to have but not necessary, I have a set of uh, Deering uh, care cloths. There's a uh, po uh, uh, polishing cloth for uh, waxing wood. There's a um, polishing cloth for hardware. So it, pol it says for polishing gold, chrome, nickel. And there's a tarnish removal cloth, tarnish cleaning, nickel and chrome. You can also buy um, jewelry cleaning cloths that will also remove tarnish from, from metals and polish metals if you prefer to do that. From, um, this is from Music Nomad. I have a, a, a neck holder that holds the neck of your instrument so you, you lay it flat like this and you can lay the neck of your banjo in um, in here and it just it holds up it holds up the neck of your instrument nicely off off the uh, work surface while you're working on it. I have a drum dial which is uh, used by um, drummers to uh, properly tension the head of their drums so it's very nice to have to properly tension the head of your banjo Although you could do that by feel, some people do it by tap tuning, um, or just just tension it until until it it's giving you the um, sound that you want. But uh, a drum dial helps certainly helps a lot for doing it uh, evenly um, and um, consistently. I have some uh, quadruple zero steel wool, four zero steel wool and uh, for um, cleaning, the, might be useful for cleaning the frets and the fretboard. Some uh, F1 oil that is also useful for cleaning, an alternative way for cleaning the fretboard. I have a capo that's, that may be helpful for um, restringing your banjo, if, especially if you have a no-knot tailpiece that has no way of holding the string in place at the tailpiece end. It just, the string just goes over a post. The loop goes over a post, but nothing holds it down, so it easily pops off the post. Um, so my solution for that is to use a capo to hold the string taut uh, while I'm fiddling with it at the um, peg head end. And uh, also from Music Nomad, I have this... Um, this um, cushioned work surface that uh, that is nice to have to lay your banjo out on a, on a surface without uh, doing any damage to the finish. Again, nice to have, not necessary. Okay, so I'm going to start the cleaning by removing the strings from my banjo, and I I just do that by loosening the string and just pulling the string off the post. And that's it, and it just slides off the, um, it slides off the, 
it very easily comes off the post at the uh, tailpiece again because it's a no knot tailpiece nothing's holding it on very well there <laughs> Once the strings are off and the tension is removed, of course, the bridge just comes right off. And the tailpiece is held loosely in place by a bolt here, but held firmly in place by the tension of the strings. So once the strings are removed, the tailpiece is going to just kind of flop around like this, and that's normal. Okay, next I'm going to uh, remove the nuts from the brackets and remove the brackets. I'm completely removing the nuts from the, uh, from the J-hooks. I wouldn't necessarily do that if I were just, let's say, changing the head, but where I want to clean these parts, I'm going to completely remove all of the nuts from the hooks. So with all the hooks and nuts removed. Now the tension hoop will just lift right off. It might take a little finessing, but it'll lift right off. And it is dirty. It has collected a lot of dust on the underside of it, on the inside of it rather. And um, yeah, it's just, um, just kind of grimy. So I'm gonna set that aside and we can remove now the head just comes off and underneath you see this is the tone ring. It's just a rolled brass tone ring. It's just sitting loosely right on top of the rim um, and uh, it feels a little dusty too. It's got, some, it's got some tarnish on it but that's okay. It doesn't hurt the um, doesn't hurt the sound, can just turn it over and hide the tarnish. Um, and with the, tone, with the um, tone ring removed, now we have a uh, largely naked banjo. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and remove the shoes as well in order to give them a thorough cleaning. Removing the shoes also facilitates uh, cleaning the, the wood of the rim very thoroughly uh, because the, the hardware is not in the way. So maybe you don't want to uh, remove the shoes. That's understandable. It's a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, so if you don't, what I would do is in order to uh, clean them in place, I would start with just the soft toothbrush and uh, just remove the dust. And this is working pretty well actually uh, to remove the uh, dust from the, from the shoes and also it's removing it from the wood around the shoes. And if that's not enough, you could use a little bit of glass cleaner on a microfiber cloth uh, as well to uh, clean the shoes in place. Or use one of the, the, the Deering uh, polishing cloth um, to polish the nickel. And it's, it's uh, coming out very nice and clean and uh, shiny now. Um, but again, I want to remove these in order to um, clean them thoroughly. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to spring a tool on you that, that I didn't show you earlier, just a stubby screwdriver. That way I can get in here and um, remove these screws on the inside of the rim without um, bumping into the dowel stick. So I'm going to do that now. And with each screw, I remove the um, shoe will just come off. Okay, now with all the shoes and screws off, 
I'm going to work on removing the tuning machines. So for the tuning machines, I'm going to use needle nose pliers to loosen the nuts. Could also use, uh, probably more appropriate to use an actual wrench, but they're not on there very tightly. So the nut comes off and the washer comes off and the machine just comes right out. And now we have a, a naked um, skeleton of a banjo, I suppose. Just the neck and the wood rim. I'm, obviously, I'm not going to remove the, um, the fifth string um, uh, tuning machine. That would, be, um, that would be difficult to do and difficult to replace. So I'm just going to leave that in place and gently clean it with the toothbrush and a uh, polishing cloth. Okay, so what do I do with all of this uh, hardware? Well, it would, I could use, um, I could use some glass cleaner on a cloth and uh, clean each one meticulously like that. I could use my toothbrush and brush them off if it's just dusty. I could use a deering cleaning cloth and meticulously clean each one. Um, these are all obviously rather tedious solutions. So you could clean all of these uh, small hardware parts in a, in a tedious fashion, doing them one at, one at a time. But I have a rather unorthodox solution. Um, you can go to uh, a hardware store or perhaps a, a Harbor Freight store and buy a vibratory parts cleaner. It's just a machine that has a bowl and um, you can put, it's meant for cleaning nuts and bolts and screws and things like that. You could put your parts in there along with, um, along with uh, the appropriate uh, cleaning medium, such as crushed walnut shell or crushed corn cob. Um, and the machine just vibrates uh, um, the pads together with the cleaning medium very, very fast. And it uh, cleans and polishes the pads in, in all together in a very rapid manner. So I don't have one of those. What I do have is a vibratory rock tumbler because one of my other hobbies happens to be um, tumble polishing rocks and um, uh, uh, one way to do that is with a vibratory tumbler that uh, works in much the same way as the uh, vibratory uh, pads cleaners that, that I mentioned. So um, this is the barrel for my uh, vibratory rock cleaner and I'm just going to take the various pats and uh, all the J-hooks and um, all the nuts and just throw them in this barrel. I'll throw the tailpiece in there and the shoes and screws as well. So all these small pats that I don't want to have to tediously clean one at a time, I'm going to throw in this vibratory tumbler. So as the cleaning medium, I have this uh, 2040 grit crushed dried corn cob. Where, where did I get this? I got this at a vendor that sells uh, materials for rock tumbling and polishing, gemstone polishing, that kind of thing. But I'm sure you could find similar kind of uh, medium such as uh, the corn cob or crushed walnut shell at uh, vendors that sell um, vibratory pads cleaners. So I'm just going to pour this in and actually largely fill this entire barrel with the crushed corn cob so that it's mostly full. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to put it in the machine for I don't know five minutes or so um, and that should be sufficient to uh, just, it's just dusty. It doesn't really need thorough cleaning. Okay, here in my garage is the uh, 
vibratory rock tumbler that I mentioned. And all that happens is I stick the barrel in, in here. And uh, you could see that there's corn cob inside and I'm just going to turn it on. So while those pads are tumble polishing, let's take care of uh, some of this other hardware. We got the brass tone ring here and uh, there's, there's tarnish on it that I think is not, is not likely to come off. But I'm going to try. I'm going to take the Deering tarnish remover and the tone ring doesn't really need to be cleaned. It's not a, a visible pad. You could sort of see it through the Renaissance head. Um, but um, other than that, with, certainly with a frosted top head, you're not going to see it. And um, even, even with the Ren head, it's, um, it's kind of visible a little bit through the head, but you're not going to see whether it's clean or dirty. Um, so I'm just going to clean it. And like I thought, this is not coming off. Next, I'm going to clean the rather dirty, surprisingly dirty. It's, it's just caught a lot of dust. Um, tension hoop, nickel plated tension hoop. And I'm actually going to start again with the um, Deering tarnish remover because I, I can't quite see whether it does or doesn't have tarnish, but I think it does. And before I do that, I'm actually going to remove the dust so that I'm not getting dust all over my um, Deering cleaning cloth. So I'm just going to remove the dust with a lightly dampened microfiber cloth. It's looking a lot more clean and shiny already. I do not see any tarnish, but it doesn't hurt to give it a quick once over with the uh, tarnish remover anyway. And with my other hand, I'm going to use a cloth to hold the um, to hold the tension hoop so that I'm not putting new fingerprints on where I'm as I remove fingerprints with uh, my cleaning efforts. And then I'm going to use the Deering uh, polishing cloth to uh, shine it up. And that looks uh, gorgeous now. Similarly, I'm going to do the armrest. Then I'm going to do the tuning machines. I'm going to brush them with a soft toothbrush and then clean them, clean them with a little bit of window cleaner. Now you may wonder why didn't I put these in the vibratory uh, tumbler as well. Um, because I'm concerned that the vibrations would force um, particles or dust even deep into the, um, into the threads. Um, and I don't want to do that. And I don't want to risk getting any uh, debris inside the tuning machine uh, itself, inside the gear case, and I don't want to risk uh, scratching the um, perloid uh, knobs. And then I'm going to hit them with the uh, polishing cloth, the Deering polishing cloth. Okay, now we're going to clean the uh, the rim and neck, and um, I might use a soft brush if there's dust um, adhering to the frets. I might use a soft brush to brush the dust away. I'm going to use a soft brush on the fifth string tuning machine. I'm going to use just a very lightly dampened, very lightly dampened rag to um, wipe the dust away from the wood. I'm just wiping the dust off the wood. I'm using a soft brush to remove dust from corners. Now I'm going to clean the fretboard. And there's different ways to do that. 
One way is to use quadruple zero. This is very, very soft steel wool and just very gently buff along with the grain. Just very, very gently, hardly any pressure. This will uh, have the nice uh, side benefit of polishing up the frets as well. And this, I find that this has been a good way to clean um, very dirty fret boards that, that just have a lot of finger grime on them and dust adhering to that grime. And um, now, you may not be comfortable doing this. I'm comfortable doing this because my instruments are just run-of-the-mill. They're, not, they're nothing terribly special. Um, they're not antiques. They're not um, vintage instruments. They're not extraordinarily expensive instruments and many thousands of dollars. Um, and I'm comfortable doing this with my instruments. If I had a vintage instrument uh, or one that uh, was more expensive than, than I cared to tinker with, I would just take it to a uh, shop to have it professionally cleaned. So that's one way of, of cleaning this. Um, another option is to use a fret eraser to gently buff the tops of the frets and shine them up. If I had fancy inlay, such as extensive inlay or very glossy um, finish inlays, um, I would also be uncomfortable uh, using the steel wool and in which case I, I would either just um, buff with a soft cloth or if that wasn't sufficient then I would take my instrument to a, um, to a shop to have it professionally cleaned. Another option is to use some F1 oil just a little tiny bit on, on a clean cloth, a few drops, just gently apply it. So you apply it, you let it soak in, and then you remove it. And to clean the rest of uh, the wood, I'm just going to use the Deering uh, polishing cloth, nothing fancy. And I'm just, I'm just going to buff all of the wood with it, except the fretboard, which is already clean now. Okay, so I've finished vibrator cleaning all of the uh, hardware and uh, just you know dump it out into a, a strainer and strain out the corn cob and there you go. And I've uh, spared you uh, watching that and I've already taken out and sorted out the hardware. Um, so let's reinstall it. Okay, the way I'm going to clean the head is with uh, some window cleaner again. I'm going to get this good and damp with a bit of window cleaner and um, I'm going to remove that thumb dirt there. And yeah, I'm going to remove even these pencil marks that showed where the um, 
the bridge placement because the head has been removed and replaced. So um, this is no longer accurate. Well, unfortunately, my camera battery died while I was uh, putting on the last bits of hardware, while I was putting on the uh, armrest and the tailpiece and stringing it up. But it's done and it looks great. It's nice and shiny and clean. It feels nice. It looks nice. I'll show you some close-ups of it. Um, but uh, there you go. Uh, thank you very much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments how, uh, how your own deep cleaning of your banjo goes. And I hope you'll check out my other videos on this channel where I just talk about my enthusiasm for banjos and claw hammer banjo playing. That's all for now. Thanks very much. Take care.